The Haunting of Hollow Grove The sun hung low, casting long shadows that stretched through the ancient trees as I ventured deeper into the heart of Hollow Grove. The forest floor was a mosaic of fallen leaves, their crisp edges crunching beneath my boots. Each step echoed through the silence, a stark reminder that I was alone in this sea of towering oaks and twisted pines. As I walked, the woods seemed to close in around me, the trees growing closer together, their branches entwining like skeletal fingers. A chill danced down my spine, but I shook it off as a product of my imagination. I was an experienced hiker, after all, unafraid of the woods' mysterious embrace. Yet, there was something different about this place. An unsettling energy that pulsed through the air, prickling my skin. It was as if the very heart of Hollow Grove was alive, watching, waiting. The path before me was overgrown, a narrow trail that seemed to lead further into the heart of the forest. The canopy above blocked out the fading light, and a sense of foreboding settled over me. It was then that I heard it, a distant, mournful wail, like a chorus of lost souls. My heart quickened, and I froze, straining to locate the source. The sound echoed through the trees, seeming to come from all directions. Who's there? I called, my voice swallowed by the oppressive silence that followed. As I stood there, a shadow seemed to detach itself from the surrounding darkness. It coalesced into the form of a woman, her tattered gown billowing like mist. Her eyes were hollow, devoid of life, and she reached out to me with spectral fingers. A gasp caught in my throat, and I stumbled backward, my heart pounding. Leave this place, she moaned, her voice a chilling breeze that seemed to pierce through me. Leave, before it claims you too. I turned and fled, my footsteps echoing through the woods. Panic gripped me, urging me to put as much distance between myself and that haunting figure as possible. The path twisted and turned, the trees blurring together in a nightmarish landscape. Suddenly, I emerged into a small clearing, and there it stood, an old, decrepit mansion, its once grand facade now marred by time and decay. Ivy crawled up its walls, and shattered windows stared out like empty eye sockets. The air around it was heavy with a stifling presence, a suffocating weight that seemed to press down on me. Despite every instinct screaming at me to run, I couldn't tear my gaze away. It was as if the mansion held me in its thrall, calling to me with invisible hands. A creaking sound echoed from within, and a flicker of movement caught my eye. A figure stood at one of the shattered windows, its face obscured by shadows. Fear coursed through me, but something compelled me to approach. As I drew nearer, the figure came into view, and my heart froze. It was a child, his eyes wide with terror, his skin pallid as death. He pressed a trembling hand to the glass, his mouth moving in silent desperation. I reached out, my fingertips grazing the cool surface of the window. Run, he mouthed, his voiceless plea echoing in my mind. Get out while you still can. With a surge of determination, I turned and fled, crashing through the underbrush, guided only by instinct. The forest seemed to resist my escape, branches reaching out to snag at my clothes, roots rising to trip me. But I refused to yield. Hours later, I burst from the trees, gasping for breath. The world beyond was bathed in the soft glow of moonlight, a stark contrast to the oppressive darkness of Hollow Grove. I stumbled to the edge of the woods, my heart pounding, and looked back one last time. The forest stood in silence, its secrets veiled in shadows. Hollow Grove had claimed so many, but I would not be one of them. With a final, determined step, I left that cursed place behind, vowing never to return. The haunting of Hollow Grove would forever be etched in my memory, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within the heart of the woods. The Unsettling Night I've camped in countless remote locations, finding solace in the stillness of the wilderness. But that night was different. 
As the sun dipped below the horizon, a sense of unease settled over me. The woods, once familiar and comforting, now seemed to hold secrets I couldn't fathom. The crackling fire offered little comfort against the encroaching darkness. Shadows danced at the periphery of my vision, and every rustle of leaves seemed amplified. The wind howled through the trees, carrying with it an otherworldly chill that sent shivers down my spine. I tried to dismiss it as my imagination, a product of fatigue perhaps, but the feeling persisted. It was as though the forest itself held its breath, watching, waiting. As the night wore on, even the usual symphony of nocturnal sounds fell silent. The absence of nature's chorus left an eerie void, punctuated only by the distant hoot of an owl. I forced myself to focus on the mundane tasks of setting up camp, hoping routine would dispel my mounting unease. Yet, every snap of twigs underfoot felt like an echo in the stillness, reverberating through the silent expanse. Finally settled in my tent, I zipped myself in, seeking refuge from the oppressive night. The flap rustled in the wind, and my heart pounded in rhythm with its erratic dance. Every gust seemed to carry whispers, indistinct and muffled, yet unmistakably present. I knew this was irrational. I'd faced far more daunting challenges in the wild. But this time, logic failed to quell the rising tide of fear. As the night pressed on, I lay in the suffocating darkness, straining to hear any sign of life beyond the confines of my tent. It was then that I heard it, a low, guttural growl, unmistakably close. My breath caught in my throat, and I held perfectly still, scarcely daring to blink. In the oppressive silence that followed, my mind raced through possibilities. A bear? A mountain lion? The logical explanations fell short, and the growl seemed to reverberate in my very bones. Minutes felt like hours as I lay there, the air growing thicker with each passing second. I knew I had to act. With trembling hands, I reached for my flashlight and unzipped the tent, casting a beam into the inky blackness. There, mere yards away, stood a figure. It was hulking, its features obscured by shadow, but its presence was undeniably malevolent. My heart pounded in my chest, and a surge of primal fear urged me to flee. I didn't think, I simply reacted. With a surge of adrenaline, I bolted from the tent, the forest a blur around me. Branches whipped against my skin, but I didn't dare look back. Finally, I burst into a small clearing and skidded to a halt, my breath ragged. The moonlight spilled through the canopy, casting an ethereal glow on the grassy expanse. I didn't know what had been in that darkness, and I didn't care to find out. Gathering what little gear I could, I fled the campsite, leaving behind the haunting memory of that night. Years of camping had taught me to respect nature's power, but that night had revealed a different force at play. It was a reminder that even the most seasoned adventurers can find themselves vulnerable in the wild. And sometimes, it's wiser to heed the primal instinct to flee than to face the unknown head-on.